three, two, one. Attention all listeners, the Legitness Podcast episode three is about to commence. Please make your way to the listening area. <laughs> <laughs> love it, fun, love it. Oh, uh, all right. Oh, wait, have one, have one. Welcome. Have one. Welcome to episode three. So, you boys went to Newcastle yeah. on the weekend <laughs> without me. I can't believe you didn't invite me, eh? Run. That was so dog. Nah. Two invites. Two invites. You want to tell people what you were doing instead of joining us on a very, very long road trip with your clients? Yeah, I was spending time with my girlfriend and sleeping. Something that we had to sacrifice. Sleep. We sacrificed a lot of <laughs> sleep. Yeah. So, well, you guys didn't actually know how far Newcastle was, right? It was going to be between four and a half to five hours. I actually didn't want to be the good human being. I was like, we'll get there like bang on 9.30. We'll be there for their first division. Because a lot of people, like I know for us, we just wanted our coach to be there and watch us compete. He was like, yeah, 9.45. And I was like, all right, so fuck. We're going to get up at 2. Let's leave at 2.30 maybe. And then he was like, are you fucking high? He's <laughs> like, it takes four hours, four or five hours to get there max. And I was like, bro, like, well, if he's on, what time is he on stage? 9.45. So what, that's like an hour to get ready for pump up, an hour to have a look at like what he's eaten check in and just like oh fuck yeah you're right 100 percent, mike was right you know that the right thing to do is to always be there for your clients that's one thing that we always pride ourselves in is not being online coaches we are people you can see face to face so we uh mark came over the night before because we thought the smartest way to do it is if we wake up from the same place we can both get ready at the same time and like bounce um so mark was a hero he slept on the couch and my dad went like ham. He was so ashamed yeah. of me for putting Mark on the couch. <laughs> like, you cannot be letting him sleep on couch. This is embarrassing. Oh, yeah. come, come to the house and get some things. <laughs> oh shit, like, what am I gonna get? Like his pillow or blanket. Bro, my dad got Mark this like that silk s- duvet. Silk oh really? <laughs> <laughs> this proper like, <laughs> that hasn't bought us anything like that for this house. <laughs> but Mark got hooked up on the couch. He was getting like, all right, I'm getting up. We're, we're leaving at 3.30. He was like, all right, I'm getting up at 3.30. <laughs> like it's a competition. Then, yeah. <laughs> 2.45, we were both up uh, by 3 o'clock. I'd say we were pretty much pretty ready, much to, ready go. to go. Yeah. Uh, got in the car, out the door, and man. Like, uh, the first event <laughs> just set up what was going to happen for the day. Because I, I swear, I swear, like, because you guys haven't told me anything about the trip yet, but I swear every single time we do a road trip anywhere, something goes wrong. Like, what was it uh, to Sydney three years ago? Like, wasn't there a speeding ticket or something? <laughs> <laughs> we make sure that we don't cop speeding tickets anymore, but he, yeah, he started it off. But no, actually, nothing went wrong this time, but a lot shit of... Shit just <laughs> happened. A lot of shit just happened. So, do you want to... You can... Oh, uh, man, like, uh, it's so hard to explain. So, we're going, obviously, Newcastle. It's 3.30 in the morning at this time, and we're going part with a Majura like the wine yards or something like that. And um, off into the distance on the left, we see what looked like a strobe light. And we're like, oh, 3.30 in the morning, people are probably having a you know, house party or something like, it's like that. It's like a fair few strobe lights. So like, it looked like proper lit up and everything. Yeah, so we got closer <clears throat> and we're like, oh yeah, no, no, it's definitely like an 18th or 21st. Like, parents have balled out, gotten these real fancy lights for their kids. As we got even closer, we looked off. And it almost looked like an illuminated purple <laughs> light with a black shadowy silhouette of a figure doing some real demonic dancing in front of this light and there was no one else yeah. there it was proper lit up like a proper festival it was like strobe lights going everywhere poles lit up this big purple black screen um and yeah it was wild like you just walked into some like demonic ritual oh it was crazy the guy like the jet <laughs> the way we, me and Bim were explaining it's like the jet party dance <laughs> so, like, i mean for the video footage yeah We'll ask, we'll ask our producers if we can actually use the copyrighted footage. Can we use the footage? They, they, they're saying no. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to have to do with... <laughs> no, but it was just it was sort of like... Wild. You know, it's like when you just start, the road trip's just started. We haven't been on the road for ages, so you think, well, what's going to happen today? And like... Oh, mad. Demonic ritual. Was, as we got close, we're like, what is this? <laughs> and then we drove past it. <laughs> and then we're just like... Shit. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry if we're rambling on, but like it just It's uh it's hard to explain. And that was this is like bang on three thirty in the morning. New road and everything, right? New road didn't help shit. 
Actually, one point where there was like a kangaroo right next to us. <laughs> like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> there was a kangaroo like it didn't swim. Oh, fuck, thank God it didn't swim across, but it was like literally hopping right next to us. Well, I didn't mean really be yeah. disrespectful, but there was mad potholes everywhere. Everywhere, everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't even see the truck. I did really well. Yeah, I got in just before eight. Did you? Um, were you the passenger to stay awake with him, or did you go to sleep? No, I'm loyal like away. that. Yeah. Wow, loyal awesome. man. Always yeah. loyal like that. Man. See, Sammy, my girlfriend, like, if she's passenger, out. Like, like an office. She'll she'll put a seat right back, as before we even like set off. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, no, nah, you can go to sleep, bro. And he's like, no, 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 go sit, sit through to the end. The least you can do for a long trip like that is stay awake. Yeah, no, and 100%. I've also I got that anxiety of like, fuck, if I fall asleep. And it's too quiet and he falls asleep on the <laughs> train. <laughs> so I'll, shit, I'll talk about whatever. I don't give a fuck. By 7 o'clock, I was crashing. So I sort of turned to Mark. I'm like, yo, can we have a power nap in the car? Yeah. And, <laughs> and he goes, we pull up in this car park. And Riley pulls up next to us. And she's super excited. Like, yeah, let's do this. Can and Mark puts, down, yeah, <laughs> Mark puts down the window and he goes, we're going to have a nap. <laughs> Put the window back up. <laughs> I was like, we're having a power nap. And he was like, you want to get in? We're napping. <laughs> she was like, didn't say nothing. So, we like, <laughs> so power nap, got upstairs. And um, now I'll say like, shout out to Chauncey. Like this guy looked spot on. Yeah, I saw the photos of Chauncey. Yeah, um, so he was he the first. Unreal. Yeah, so Chauncey was the first one we had on stage. And the guy for a first time competitor just did everything right. He was. He did make those sort of first time mistakes, you know, not turning his legs on, yeah. missing certain cues, and like obviously you posed him, so I'm yeah. sure you felt those frustrations. Well, like, like once he, he did, once he yelled out to him, then he turned all his stuff, legs on and all that, but. Yeah, he was good. Was but good. the thing is, like, we've always had that mindset of, you know, when you go on stage, you know, your focus, yeah. your zone, everything you do is with purpose. Is, yeah. So. so we had left him, and, you know, he looked really good. Mike did an awesome job with his pump up. Like, all right, man, we'll see you out there. Like any show, there's small delays, so like, okay, he's probably got another five minutes before he goes on. We'll just quickly go back and check in on him. This dude here was making friends with everybody. Yeah. <laughs> like, and we, like, we didn't want to interrupt him, like, wait, what the fuck are you doing, man? Like, fuck, come on, you know? And after he got off stage, I thought you want to go to war. What happened there? He goes, yo, this guy was complimenting my legs like crazy. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> he was just so nice. I didn't want to be mean to him. But you're right, man. Fuck that guy. <laughs> um, but we had a bit of a break between us um, helping Georgie and then our next client, Georgia, getting on stage. And naturally, as anyone who knows us, UFC weekend means we just putting on bets. <laughs> this is the real UFC job. Weekend. This is real money. Stock this is market. this is this real is stocks. stocks. And you don't realize it at the time, but everything else is going on and around you. And one of the veteran um, <laughs> coaches, uh, Peter Mapagu, uh, caught us on camera and he was almost like ashamed of us. Like, <laughs> yeah, it didn't seem like he was. <laughs> he was like, don't worry, I caught you. <laughs> For all of you out there that watch UFC or MMA fans and follow me on social media, I told you all, Aljamain Sterling was going to win that fight. Four to one underdog, the Funk Master is back. <laughs> and just in case you don't believe me, and I hope I do this right, I'm going to drop our multi right here. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. <laughs> well, I think we were like halfway through a division. Um, we were just chilling, just watching the show, and then I was just like, I had the phone off, and Viv was like invested. I was like, oh, yeah, just <laughs> and then, then, then when we went backstage and then he got all his arrogant voice like, see I fucking told you so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've made everyone apologise <laughs> hey yeah look I thought that uh, Piotr Jan was going to win but I think we were getting ready to pump up Chauncey for one of his division or we were running around doing something so we didn't really get to watch that one that much but um, Just um, so, so who else competed um so Catherine Stevens was the first uh, girl that went on stage. So one of Riley Moran's she clients. She looked phenomenal. She looked really, she looked good. really good. Um, I know we talked about this on the way back, but it's bodybuilding, dude. It's mm. the lineup that you go in. Whatever the majority tends to look like is the way the judges tend to go. Like yeah, she yeah. was a she was spot on. Her conditioning was phenomenal. 
really, really good, but they just had bigger girls on stage. Yeah, so, so she it's just more got muscular. Out. Right, so she just yeah. got outmuscled. But she she um placed in she most placed of her divisions, did she? Yeah, I think she came fourth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she did really, really well. Um, Chauncey, like we said, uh, had a, a great showcasing. Uh, couple, uh, first place in... First rookie. timers? That was rookie. rookie. First, he got first place in rookie, a couple seconds in first timers, and then... Did he win a classic? Came second in classic twice, and then he got a, an opens fourth place. Which is pretty good. Huge. For first. Yeah, for your first show. Yeah, what he said. Placing in an opens in your first show. That's huge. crazy, yeah. Huge. Yeah, because opens, everyone can compete in it. There's no yeah. limit to who does that. And then uh, Georgia Cook, who um, was coming back for, I think this is her third show, uh, it was the first time placing top five. Yeah. So she came third, which was a huge, huge improvement from where she was last year. So yeah, definitely a huge shout out to Georgia. Yeah, she sent me a photo of her um, one year progress and it's like everything's brought up. It's yeah, awesome. yeah. She did really, really well. Um, and then we had Holly, um, who it was her first time competing. And you know what I loved about Holly? Amazing energy. That girl was so happy to be there. Like that was the first thing she said. I was like, "How do you feel?" And she goes, "I made it." Yeah. And if that is not the like the best thing you want to hear from a client on mm. show day, is you know, "I made it," and that sense of pride. So you know, really, really proud of her efforts. And then there was uh, Georgia I, who placed way better than she sh um, thought she would, and she got a second place in she one of the bikini divisions. She placed in all of her divisions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she did really well. Yeah. Um, so and th that's another thing, you know. You sometimes go in with no expectations, and then when the results sort of turn out in your favor, now everything's amazing. That, that's one of the best experiences you'll ever have in your life. So, as far as our clients go, we, we had a really, really good showcasing uh, on the day. <laughs> I don't know, for me, like there were moments for us because we haven't been on the road, like we said, mm. where we just went back into coach mode. And I know there was uh, it was uh, classic physique. And we were sitting down watching Chauncey on stage. And we were looking at every pose, pose for pose. And we're like, all right, he wins that one. He wins that one. He wins that one. He's going to win this for sure. There's no way he doesn't win this. And he was going up against a, a guy who had nice shape and his posing was fantastic. And we just thought, if they give it to him just because his posing's better, they're completely overlooking everything else. And anyways, you know, fifth went, fourth went, third went and it was between Chauncey and this other guy. And you have these sort of feeling where you get those butterflies, you're like, yeah, I can't wait to run on stage when he wins. And like second place, Chauncey. And under my breath, I was like, fucking bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I've been so, I guess, politically correct for so long, but I didn't have that emotion. Yeah. <laughs> That's just that moment of fucking bullshit. And you're sitting in the audience, there's a grandma next to you, and she's giving you this dirty look. Um, but for that to be in Chauncey, had just like mad fans behind us. They were like, all right, guys, who's going to win it? Last two competitors. And then there was people behind us like, yeah, competitor number 32. And we were just like, yeah, Chauncey's got, Chauncey's got fans, man. And we thought it was our girls. We are yeah. like, oh, that's nice. They're watching him. And then it was just like some yeah. guys, yeah, some chick with this jealous boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Chauncey's made heaps of friends. <laughs> Chauncey, Chauncey was very well liked. Yeah. He's just this... Chancy. Chancy, yeah. <laughs> the older, the, uh, one of the ladies was um, the usher, was it, or whatever you call it? Backstage, sure. Ba backstage, uh, she was running the backstage. backstage yeah. like, Chancy, <laughs> Chancy. <laughs> and then like, oh, sorry, it's Chauncey. And then, like, yeah, she just remembered his name the whole day. I don't know, man. It, it was a good experience. Like, I know that like the show is definitely about the clients, but it felt really good to get back on the road. I know we... We, to be fair, we, we stayed awake the whole yeah. drive. Um, <laughs> you had to, you drove. <laughs> <laughs> but it, just the conversations were good again to just yeah. be able to go through the whole experience of waking up early, the inconvenience of that, complaining about the inconvenience, yeah. there's something on the road happening, you're going, what the fuck is that? And then getting there, being tired, trying to figure out ways to like, all right, how can I not be tired? Timing yeah. your stim so that way. <laughs> like, I had a nap. Like I slept backstage. I didn't like straight up. <laughs> I slept did, you, did you did you do a, a, one of those caffeine naps? They're all the rage these days. No, What's no. A, oh, sorry. So caffeine naps is basically like you have a coffee and then you go to sleep for fifteen minutes and then you wake up and you're fresh. Like you don't have to go to sleep. You just have to like close your eyes and have like super low like stimulus. Fifteen minutes after like shotting a coffee, is and then you yeah yeah like legit like there's a full study on it and everything. 
Bring me this study. It's a game changer. I'm bringing. <laughs> <laughs> No, nah, tr- oh, nah, Viv did have a nap backstage and he was like, <laughs> he just laid out on the floor and he's like, wait, I'm going to lay down next to Chauncey so they don't think I'm yeah, like, yeah, you, you can be your competitor. <laughs> he his legs up and like had his eyes closed and Viv just fucking lay next to him. Who <laughs> had a nap? I thought I blended in. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, it was cool seeing the, um, the other coaches again. Yeah, though. yeah, we ran into Andrew um, from Onus. Peter McCarthy, Peter Ripon. Um, who else did we see? Marina's fan Stoke. Stolk, sorry. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it's good seeing all of them. Again. Yeah, because because Ripon had some pretty good um competitors up there too. One two overalls, I think. Yeah, on the two day. overalls, yeah. like physique and something sports. Else. I think it was. Yeah. It was like um boyfriend girlfriend or husband and wife combination. Luxor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah. Um, that was good to oh, see. Oh, and um, there was a chick from Canberra who. Oh no, that was Victoria because Victoria was on on the same day as well, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, I think there was a chick that was from Canberra who won, okay, won sports overall in Victoria. I think her name's Chloe. From Canberra, Chloe Yuan. I don't know you. Yeah, she's Asian. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> nah, trust me. It's uh, I don't have my phone. Straight waffle in this place. Yeah. <laughs> Straight waffle. I wanted to give a shout out to another Canberra chick, but I don't remember her name. I feel so- I'm sorry. Shout out to Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> it was, but no, for real. Like it, I was so impressed with the fact that Mark just soldiered through that drive. Cause straight, like, did you offer? No, no, I swear. No, he did. He's like, yeah, he did. He's like, I'll drive back. I was like, no, bro. I I did have a can of Oxy Shred before we left. Where can you buy Oxy Shred? Available at Elite Subs Lanyon. Not Sizak. Monday to Sunday. You know, that's what I had to do. You know, this isn't even a funny story. Um, Saturday, late night, my only staff member I had available to work on Sunday calls me and tells me he's got COVID. So now I'm thinking, oh, well, I can't make him work with COVID. So I'm calling up anyone and everyone I know to come and work the shop. Even people that have never worked in a shop in their <laughs> lives. I'm asked like, it, it, it's really not hard. Do you use pre-workout? Yeah, just sell pre-workout then. It's all good. <laughs> and um, everyone said no. So nice friends. Um, Jess, my girlfriend actually stood um, st- stepped up, stood up, stepped up, stepped up, stepped up, stepped up too. It's a good movie, man. I thought that was Cobra Boys. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't that stop the yard? What's Dodgeball 1? Oh, fuck. What is Dodgeball 1? Ain't it the... Uh, maybe it is. But they yeah. stopped the yard as well. <laughs> maybe that is. Let's... Fuck, whatever. Continue. So my girlfriend, who's never worked in a sub store in her life, worked and actually had a record day. So you know what? Thank you, Jess. You know what's a pre- bro? This guy. <laughs> Actually, I got a story. I got a story. Watch me edit this podcast. I swear to God, it's gotta be good. Watch me edit this shit. We just shoot a waffle in at the end. Yeah. This is. This is. The, all right. We've deleted many of these, and this is by far the shittest. But you know what? It's gotta stay for this story. Um, and it's not even a good story. Anyways, we've been in the car for like ages, and in order for me to stay awake, I'm pumping down energy drinks. Yeah. Like I've had my oxy shred. I've got like this ghost energy drink. I had like a Coke while I was there, like anything I could to stay awake. And we get to the closest back. It's like, oh, we'll quickly eat dinner before we finish like the last hour and a half of the drive. And I've been busting to go pee, man. So anyways, we walk into this Macca's and then Mark goes, all right, I'll quickly order us food. And then I'm getting ready to walk to the bathroom. He goes, hey, what do you want? I'm like, all right, this is equally as important. So I come back, we do the order. The thing gives you the ticket, you know, you order number 123 and then the ticket's in Mark's hand I'm like alright cool and I start walking towards the bathroom and Mark goes hey hold this I need to go to the bathroom <laughs> I was like <laughs> <laughs> he was already walking up. and then I ordered the bit I was like alright cool we got the order wait, I was like, wait hold this I need to take a piss <laughs> and then he was like oh, I was gonna go <laughs> I was like oh I was gonna go and I was like Oh fuck, bro, do you wanna go? <laughs> I was like, you know what? <laughs> fuck it, you go. I made three attempts to go to cut me off and all of them. Just... 
<laughs> like, we had some funny, funny times, man. And that's what traveling, uh, like, the traveling shows is all about. Is just we always come away with memories, even if it, the day starts off shit or like you know we feel like shit. There's always good memories that come from it, and I think that is the perfect thing to sign us off on. Thank you for listening. <laughs>